In this video, we're going to first learn how to, uh, how to identify groups on steroids, and then we're going to learn how to draw them. Uh, there's a handout available to you at HFC Online, and it is found right here in our Chapter 26 Corrected Steroid Numbering System. It's a document, and we have to use this system here. So you have that available to you but you don't have it available on tests. This information will not be given to you on tests. And here it is. Steroids have the ABCD system. You should be able to draw it. It's rather simple. You draw a six-membered ring fused to another six-membered ring right beside each other. You fuse a third six-membered ring going up to the right and then straight to the right off of that you fuse ring D which is a five-membered ring. Steroids almost always have a methyl here. It's called carbon-18. A methyl here called carbon-19. And a methyl here called carbon-21. You have to learn where to start your numbering and the pattern. Start the numbering. And not, uh, here's the bridgehead between A and B. Start up to the left off the bridgehead. One, two, three, four, five. Continue the loop around the outside, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and then jump up to the next ring, 11, 12, 13, and it doesn't go around this time. It goes around, uh, sorry, in the middle and then around. That is because steroids almost always continue outside of the rings with carbon 20 up here. Notice it's 20 because we've already used 18 and 19 for the methyls. Continuing 22, 23, 24, it is quite uncommon but not impossible to have a group off of 24 and 25. 26 is a methyl. The longest you'll see a steroid, it typically ends at, well, not typically, longer steroids end at 27. So there we have it. Uh, in this example here, we see there are alcohols on positions three and five and we'll write that down don't forget to classify your alcohols on three it's secondary on five it's not secondary it is tertiary you do not have to identify the methyl groups that are always there I do need to see it when we do have a 24 with a 1 on it. And if there was another one off of that carbon, we call it a 24 with a 2 on it. I am referring to this area over here. Those are not normal. I need to hear about them. So the only methyl that I have to hear about is the one labeled 24, 1. We labeled it right here. Uh, it is This double bond is E, and it's between carbons 22 and 23 and there's our 24 1 up there these are both normal we called one of them 26 and one of them 27 over here and I'm flexible in grading this you can t call either one of those 26 or 27 uh, there is an acetate ester off of let's call it 27 I typically prefer you to tell me where the steroid ends here at 27. That means it has all the carbons. In this example, if you left it blank, I'm, I'm assuming it has all the carbons. Unless you tell me otherwise, you'd be okay leaving this part out. Uh, carbon 6, we forgot to say there is a ketone, and that will be it for our first steroid. In our next example, we see there is a sugar moiety sticking off of our steroid. This is quite common. This is called a glycolipid, glyco being a short form notation for a sugar, and that's on carbon 3. Carbon 14, it's rare, but this happens sometimes. 14 has an alcohol. If this is 20 up here, which it is over here, then 21 is the methyl and it's participating in a cyclic ester. Do you remember what those are called? Yes, they're called lactones and you're going to tell me this steroid ends not at 27 but at 23. I need to hear that this time. 
Let's work on naming the steroid. Then we're going to name the sugar. And the sugar here. In fact, that's not the sugar I wanted. I'm going to do a small change on it. I made this into an L sugar. It's called Ramnose, if you're curious, but that's not going to that's not going to cut it when you name it. I want you to give me its real name in terms of deoxyon 6 and all that good stuff we did in previous videos. So where are our groups? We have a glycoside on 3. I'm going to say that. As you can see, the methyl in 21 forms a lactone with carbonyl on 23. Covered that here. 21 provides the oxygen for a lactone to 23. There's a double bond between 20 to, ooh, 20 to 22. That's written right here. Alkene. Uh, you can cover the whole ring in a different way. Instead of saying these things at the end here, you could say 17 is attached to a 3-butenolactone. You might want to review the nomenclature of that. The butenolactones, 1, 2, 3, 4. Four for butene and it's attached on carbon 3 to the steroid that's why the first 3 is here and the 2 refers to the position of the double bond in the lactone there's 1, 2, 2 is double, double bond to 3 and that covers everything except naming the sugar here and we're going to unwrap this sugar over here to figure out what it is uh, there's the sugar rotation from here after I open it up uh, gives this sugar here methyl groups now in the loop so I can convert to the Fisher and the Fisher is the mirror image of this Fisher and the OH is the O not the OH the O is missing from carbon 6 L6 deoxymanose when it was the ring it was definitely a alpha ring because the methyl, the distal methyls trans to the O in the acetal. So it is a alpha. Change that to Greek in a second. 6-deoxymanose, not manose anymore. Manopyranose, but not pyranose anymore because it's an acetal, which is a glycoside. Manopyranoside. Yes, every bit of that name is important. Nope, wrong font. And there we go. So that's part of the answer there. Moving along, we have to draw a steroid that's got all of these features here. First of all, draw a steroid. Ring A, ring B, ring C, ring D, You've got your rings. Let's see. There's going to be a linkage to C1 to C3 uh, with this L6 deoxymanopyranoside. Oh, that's nice. We already have that from our previous question. Coincidence? Maybe. So on carbon 3, we've got that group there. And what else do we have? We have all the carbons up to 23. Alcohols. A lot of alcohols in this one. We've already done the one on carbon 3. It's be It became an acetal. Uh, carbon 1 has an alcohol. And so does 5-11-14-19. 5-11-14-19. Doesn't say any methyls are missing, so we need the methyl that's called 18. That's right here. And the one that's called 19 is right here. And it's got an alcohol on it, so let's make a bond for an alcohol. After doing that, I, I would think this is a very water-soluble steroid, wouldn't you? And we need a double bond between 20 and 22. And 23 is linked to 21 and a lactone. Hmm, we got some work to do. So we got our up here. It says that 23 is linked to 21 right here in a lactone. So these are the atoms in the lactone. 1, 2, 3, 4. So it would be 5-membered lactone because O is one of the atoms. 
Let's put it on there and see if it fits. It seems like there's a lot in common between this one and our last one. Uh, we've done the lactone between 21 and 23, just like the one above. So, uh, and I think it has a double bond, just like the one above. It says double bond between 20 and 22. And it ends at 23. Yes, all carbons up to 23. So that's that. Um, normal methyl groups except C18. Oh, we got to get rid of C18, and we're told it's not there. Now that's different. And what else we do? We got our manos. I think we're done with this one. All right. It was a lot of work. All right. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Enjoyed. I hope you have benefited from. Even if you don't enjoy it, if you benefit from it, it's a useful activity. Uh, and I, hope, I look forward to our next video.